Thousands of volunteers building thousands of fences, planting millions of trees, going into combat against weeds, erosion and soil degradation. This year, northeastern Victoria celebrates 25 years of land care. I think initially that this got going because there were very few trees. We probably started before we had a land care group in the area, the Talangata Shire had a farm tree group. People came on board in different, for different reasons and at different rates. My husband started off going to the first land care meeting with a pen and paper because his memory was failing and he, he was the only one that turned up with a pen and paper so he was nominated secretary. We've been involved since the inception. When we first started off as a land care group and we had no sophistication, we had no idea how to run a meeting. Initially it was a fair, fair focus on trees and um, erosion, eroding gullies and things, but now it's more moved into um, broader scale sustainability on farm which includes pastures and um, grazing management, ground cover preservation. The first project here that I'm aware of was a small plantation down at Tintulja. The land care kicked off here in about 93. I didn't get involved for three or four years. So it was, was about 96 or seven that I first got involved um, with, a, with a project at home, fencing out a, a stream and uh, stabilising it. Everyone wants to do things better. I, I don't think that I've ever come across anyone that really wants to degrade their land because it's, it's their major asset. Being a farmer is an incredibly complex job. Uh, they run their own businesses, they've got to balance all these different uh, conflicts which happen. I don't think people understand the conflicts that farmers go through. I've always been interested in, in the soil and the soil life. For a start we, we stopped using superphosphate as such because uh, we were putting it on year after year with, and not getting any, any results. The soil health programs that have been initiated by Eva uh, Ovens Landcare Network or the individual landcare groups um, have been tremendous. Scientists have suggested to us that we can actually grow our soil and this comes into carbon, some of the carbon issues that they talk about these days. Um, I think it's more vital, rather than charging people for the emissions, we should be really looking at growing our soil and producing healthier food through that, doing that, it's sort of a, just a benefit to everyone. We've had paddocks that have been totally ploughed up with earthworms and um, that's all good. They're aerating the soil and they're providing our nutrients in a soluble form for the plants. And this is going on during the growing period. We've recently uh, put in a little trial of the A. longer worms up at Grenier and uh, we have biological control of Patterson's Curse so we've really tried to diversify to keep our land care group going and uh, I think it's been very successful. This paddock is uh, Sardi 7 Lucen, uh, sown in October. We've picked a pretty good uh, year to sow that. But again, it assists with the uh, salinity problems we have here. We've had to lime the, uh, the paddocks to build the pH up and so in October, so we've had a wonderful year to get us established. We've looked at uh, weed control, we've looked at uh, vermin control. We had a big vermin field day here at our place where we had uh, 50 people uh, participated. We got the idea of this from a gentleman by the name of Albie McIntosh for the Springhurst Land Care Group. So he came up and spoke at that. We've got introduced dung beetles. There were dung beetles here, but we've introduced other seasonal dung beetles into the area. You know, funnily enough, one of the things I think that's had the biggest effect that the land care group's done for probably the easiest effort was dung beetles, which doesn't seem much, but I guess they've made a huge difference to the fact that there's not as many flies. And, and for input wise, we didn't have to do a lot of work. They're doing it all for us. Yeah, they burrow down, cut the manure down and, and uh, open up the soil and certainly improves the soil structure and fertility and hopefully reduces the nutrient runoff into the waterways. 
Yeah, and I should have mentioned the rabbits because certainly there was a lot of, of rabbits were, were a big issue and there was a coordinator working on rabbits that was ripping and, and um, a, a lot of fumigating and, and you know you sort of just don't see rabbits around as much as you used to and, and that's certainly a really good thing. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two. Got a small rabbit problem? Well pretty soon it could be a big one. Your community is doing something. Join your local land care group now. And a part of that program was also fox baiting. And at one stage that seemed to have made uh, quite a difference to the number of foxes. But what, I think these days we're seeing quite a few foxes again. And it hasn't been a coordinated um, program for a while. The, the basket willow is a very invasive plant. Uh, the catchment management is they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. They've, they've had to pull this out. They've been unfortunate this year where they have pulled it out that there's been some massive rains. Uh, they have worked tirelessly hard to rectify some problems which have happened in a few of these areas. Possibly the main problem for this district would be erosion and erosion control. Just due, due to being sort of a granite, granitic type soils, and steep country, reasonably high rainfall. There's a water watch team set up in our land care group and they're monitoring uh, several sites every every month and it'll be great in, in years to come to look back on, on these uh, samples and stuff they're taking now. One of the things that I think that was great that came out of land care was an awareness, raising an awareness of the value of the remnant vegetation, the bush and things, not just because it's what makes us Australian, one of the things that makes us Australian, but also for its value for looking after the land, for clean water and and you know erosion control and and things so so I got 15,000 from my Enviro fund and I gave him 11 and kept 4,000 there to finish off down here particularly with that drop down fence so I said we have to fence start fencing off our river banks and our creek banks says the farmers no those bloody things don't work, you know, no way, can you fence up? Ah, I'll destroy it. I said, you drop this down, the water goes over. So when it's finished, you stand it up again. Yeah, drink that with a grain of salt. Anyway, I went ahead, I've got one drop down fence up there. I said, it can be done. So Lindsay, we've got a really healthy stand here. This was planted out and seven, seven or eight years old, you say? Yes, yes. It was planted under the a part of the Heartlands project several years ago. As you can see, there's a, there's a, a mixture of species, understory as well as, as eucalypts. And part of the criteria was that there's 50% of each. I've never seen so many mudlarks in one, one mob. There's at least 50 this morning, all feeding in the one area. and. Other times, uh, there's that many grass parrots around, all, you know, in, in mobs of two or three hundred, and I've uh, never seen that before. There's been a lot of work gone into stabilising streams and, and re-veg. Um, yeah, many kilometres of fencing put up and uh, a, lot of, a lot of erosion controlled. I think the value of corridors does have a monetary value that probably hasn't been studied enough. And so that, that corridor makes a lot of difference to our sheep. Um, and to you know cut the cold wind and in summer we get hot winds as well and so um, some of that planting's really helped with that. Certainly our revegetation programs has, has been a focal point and a real interest point and we've we're up to our uh, 11th annual National Planet Arc Tree Day and that's involved tree days and um, school tree days and the community days. Young people turning up to plant trees you know this is an event where there's an opportunity for them to contribute and and they've said as much, you know, they want to contribute. We had a public meeting about establishing a sustainability group. More than a hundred people came to that meeting and subsequent meetings. And the sustainability group um, developed to the extent that it had four working parties. It's been fantastic to see the revegetation that's happened joining those patches of bushland up so that we're creating more space and, and corridors to link um, those patches of bush. So for those, um, well, lots of common species, but also the rare and threatened species, um, expanding those areas where they can move to. Um, so I think revegetation's been a really important um, part of this area. 